Okay, so we've got our matinee um, initially set up and uh, we're ready to um, test it out and um, hook it up to the rest of the network. Uh, there were a couple of things that I did notice uh, in the last video when I uh, played it back. And um, the first thing is uh, that uh, we are getting our message here when um, uh, we don't have the sphere or the uh, or the light enabled. And you'll also notice that uh, the message is only coming up once, which means that again I've forgotten to um, uh, set the maximum trigger count to uh, zero. So I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to switch the maximum trigger count to zero. And uh, now we have to uh, figure out how to um, stop these triggers from actually being um, enabled uh, before the um, the actual um, uh, lights and spheres are, are brought in to represent them. Uh, and I think uh, probably the best way to do this is that we can actually take an output from this toggle here with the event, uh, which is um, a turn on input on this toggle, and we can get it to turn on uh, these trigger touch events. Uh, so what I'll do is I'm just going to draw a box around these. Let's bring this up a little bit. Um, I might bring this up a bit there. And I'm going to bring these over just going to plug in the event output into these um, trigger touch events and I'm going to switch these to disabled to start with and uh, that fixes up the uh, the problem of uh, these triggers being enabled before we get a chance to um, uh, switch on the uh, lights that uh, represent them so now um, I just want to come in and have a look at the animation of our door opening. So I'm just going to come into Kismet, come over to our matinee, and I'll close Kismet just to sort of give us a little bit more room. I might move this down here for now. And um, there's our, our line of, um, of movement. And if I, I'll just bring it over to here and I will switch back to unlit mode so we can uh, see things a little bit more clearly and now if we uh, play a loop of the s of the section I'll just see what section we've got if we fit it uh, to view and the loop uh, will make the whole one second and now if we click on loop section and have a look at it uh, we can see that there is a slight problem in that uh, when the uh, door comes in for that last uh, keyframe it seems like it has been moved back a bit uh, so what I'm going to do is stop this and go to this last keyframe, so I just clicked on this keyframe here. And I'm just going to uh, make sure that the door lines up with that slot. And now if we click on play, uh, we have it um, coming back and sliding down into that section there. And I'm happy with that. Okay, so uh, with that um, set up, uh, let's hook it up to our network. Uh, so um, once we um, destroy these, um, uh, destroy the interp actors uh, that represent the, the uh, trigger and switch off the lights, we want the uh, trigger to finally activate uh, this matinee. And uh, we don't want it to to loop, and we don't want it to um, to uh, to play through again. So we will just uh, leave it as is. 
and let's test out um, how this plays in game. So again, we are going to need a little bit of legwork. I'm going to try and use as few swaps as possible. You'll notice that there is a problem here in that our uh, link gun isn't present here, but it does uh, update, and I'm going to look at uh, figuring out a way to fix that in our next um, next lesson. So uh, what I'll do is come down to here. And yep, we need uh, another person to activate. We need the other trigger to be to activate. Just swap to Bob. And now, hopefully, once we uh, step into this uh, trigger, the door should open, and it does. And now uh, the trigger has disappeared. Uh, the uh, the lighting and um, the um, the interpactor have also disappeared, and uh, and the door has uh, the door has opened. Now uh, that door opening, that's going a little bit fast uh, for my liking. So I might actually just slow that down to uh, to half its speed. So I'm just going to come in and um, stretch this out to two seconds. I'm just going to grab this keyframe and holding control, I'm just going to move that keyframe up to there. And the halfway point, I'm going to put that at one second. And now, if we um, if we look at our door and hit loop, and that's because the uh, the actual section is still set to um, one second. So. Take that up to two seconds. And now, yeah, it's fairly slow, but it gives the player a chance to see what's going on and uh, follow that uh, that door uh, closing down there like that. Uh, now, um, I don't want it to be just this door. I will also want it to be uh, these doors as well. Um, so uh, this opposite door here. And over on this opposite side, I want this door, and also the door that the other, um, the other player, the other activator is um, is standing in front of. So I'm just going to select those and go into Kismet. And uh, here's um, uh, the good thing: we don't have to uh, draw out new matinees. All we need is the um, object variables. Uh, for these items, and we can plug these straight into doors. And uh, now, uh, if we check the animation, this is over on the other side to what we were looking at before. If we check the animation, uh, we'll be able to see that um, there is um if we just uh, play through uh we do have the uh, the doors acting the way that they are supposed to uh in a previous um version of UDK uh I tried this and the doors were snapping over to where the original position of the first door was uh, if that's happening with you just right click on here and make sure that check that you've checked relative to initial and uh and so we uh, now have our doors opening <laughs>